What's good form when receiving ghosts? We cannot urge you too strongly to appear perfectly natural when receiving a ghost. If you are seated, remain so. You won't gain anything by standing up. When reading, you may lay aside your book if you wish. Or if you are very nervous, you may walk across the room and flick your cigarette ashes off in the tray. This will conceal your embarrassment for the time being. Good evening, and welcome to History Obscura. I do hope Minnie Mew was a good little host last weekend and remembered to share some tea and biscuits with everyone. No? Oh, that Mew. Well. Once upon a time, there was a man called William Mumler. Mumler's story begins in the mid-19th century, a time of great curiosity and fascination with the supernatural. Mumler was a humble photographer living in Boston, but he became known for something far more mysterious, spirit photography. His first spirit photograph was apparently an accident, a self-portrait which, when developed, revealed not only his image, but that of his deceased cousin. Mumler then left his job as an engraver to pursue spirit photography full time, it was certainly the right time and the right place for such an art, as the American Civil War was in full swing. Families throughout Boston, and of course the rest of the country, had lost friends and family members. In an era when the idea of communicating with the dead captured the public's imagination, Mumler claimed to have the ability to capture images of departed loved ones on photographic plates. The spirit photos depicted his clients alongside ghostly apparitions or transparent figures. These images were purportedly the spirits of deceased loved ones or other supernatural entities, such as spirit guides, captured on these photographic plates. In the photographs, they would pose in typical Victorian fashion, seated or standing, while a faint, ethereal figure appeared beside or behind them. The ghostly figures were usually partially or completely transparent, giving them an otherworldly appearance. Sometimes they'd have a misty or blurry quality. Mumler's studio became a haven for those seeking solace and closure after the loss of a loved one. Clients flocked to him, eager to glimpse a spectral visage from beyond the grave. Spirit photographs became highly sought after souvenirs of the afterlife. Not one to miss out on an opportunity for profit and a good show, one Phineas Taylor Barnum, the famed showman and circus owner, played a significant role in the William Mumler story. Recognizing this chance to capitalize on the growing fascination with spiritualism and the afterlife, Barnum exhibited Mumler's spirit photographs at his American Museum in New York City in 1869. However, it was that same year when Mumler's career took a dark turn. He was accused of exploiting grief for financial gain and faced a trial for fraud. The trial was a highly publicized event that captivated the attention of both believers and skeptics of spirit photography. It took place in Boston, Massachusetts, with Mumler facing charges of fraud for allegedly deceiving his clients by claiming that his photographs captured genuine images of departed spirits. Even P.T. Barnum testified against him, having hired Abraham Bogardus to create a picture that appeared to show Barnum with the ghost of Abraham Lincoln to demonstrate the ease with which such spirit photography could be created. The prosecution at the trial presented evidence aimed at proving that Mumler's spirit photographs were nothing more than elaborate hoaxes. They argued that Mumler achieved the ghostly images through double exposure 
a technique in which two separate images are superimposed onto a single photographic plate. Critics pointed to inconsistencies in his methods and questioned the authenticity of the ghostly figures depicted in the photographs. On the other hand, the photographer himself and his supporters maintained that the spirit photography was genuine and that he possessed a unique ability to capture images of the supernatural. The man himself testified in his own defense, asserting that he had no control over the appearance of the spirits in his photographs and that they only appeared to certain individuals under specific circumstances. The trial drew widespread attention from the media and the public, with many eager to witness the outcome of this extraordinary case. In the end, the jury returned a verdict of not proven, indicating that while Mumler had not been definitively proven guilty of fraud, there was also insufficient evidence to fully exonerate him. Despite the inconclusive verdict, Mumler's reputation as a spirit photographer was irreparably damaged, and he faced continued scrutiny and skepticism in the years following the trial. Nevertheless, William Mumler's studio was consulted by one very prolific widow in 1872, Mary Todd Lincoln. The widow of President Abraham Lincoln, Mary Todd sought out the spirit photographer's services in the midst of her grief over the assassination of her husband. She had been very interested in the paranormal since the death of their son, Willie, from typhoid fever at the age of 11 in 1862. During his illness, Willie's condition deteriorated rapidly despite medical attention. His death deeply affected his parents, and especially his mother, Mary Todd Lincoln, who was said to have been devastated by the loss. Willie's death occurred in the midst of the Civil War, adding further strain to the already troubled times for the Lincoln family and the nation as a whole. It was in the fervent hope of connecting with the spirit of her deceased husband that Mary Todd approached William Mumler. During their photography session, the latter captured an image of Mrs. Lincoln seated in a chair, her expression solemn and contemplative. Standing behind her in the photograph is a faint, ethereal figure believed by some to resemble the likeness of President Lincoln. The ghostly figure appears to be looking down at Mrs. Lincoln with a comforting and paternal presence. That is not the only story of an encounter with the late Civil War president, either. One such incident took place during World War II when British Prime Minister Winston Churchill was staying in the White House as a guest of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. One night, after emerging from a hot bath, Churchill walked into his bedroom completely naked, carrying a cigar in one hand and a glass of scotch whiskey in the other. As he entered the room, he was surprised to see the figure of Abraham Lincoln standing by the fireplace. The British PM, a known wit, said, Good evening, Mr. President. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. The ghost supposedly smiled at Churchill before disappearing, at which point the room's live occupant then calmly resumed his activities. Churchill recounted the incident to a few close friends, including British Air Marshal Sir Arthur Harris, who later mentioned it in his memoirs. The story has since become a well-known part of the lore surrounding both Winston Churchill and Abraham Lincoln. As for the photographer, Mumler's legacy remains shrouded in mystery and debate. Was he a talented medium with a gift for capturing the supernatural, or merely a skilled manipulator preying on the vulnerable? James Wallace Black, a distinguished Boston photographer, visited Mumler's studio to investigate the production of spirit photographs. Initially, Black was perplexed by these images, unable to comprehend how they were created. Despite his expertise in photography, the techniques seemed to elude him. Upon arriving, 
at the Spirit Studio. Black meticulously examined the equipment and processes used by William Mumler. He scrutinized the cameras, photographic plates, and darkroom procedures in an attempt to unravel the mystery behind the Spirit photographs. Despite his thorough investigation, Black struggled to understand how Mumler achieved his results. The images appeared to defy conventional photographic methods, leaving Black puzzled and intrigued. After the initial confusion, Black remained determined to uncover the truth behind these photographs and continued his investigation, conducting experiments in his own studio to replicate those of Mumler. Through persistence and meticulous research, Black eventually began to unravel the secrets behind the spirit photographs. He discovered evidence of double exposure and manipulation techniques used by Mumler to create the illusion of ghostly apparitions. The renowned spirit photographer persevered with his craft, despite Pierre's belief that he was too stupid to manipulate the standard camera to serve any particular function, and eventually created the Mumler process, by which a photograph could be printed directly onto newspaper, thus revolutionizing the newspaper industry forever. The man's work in spirit photography was a mere footnote on his tombstone. And as for the Mary Todd Lincoln photograph featuring one Abraham Lincoln, you can see that on our Instagram page. Enjoy. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the enigmatic world of William Mumler and spirit photography. Remember to subscribe to History Obscura for more tales of the mysterious and obscure. And subscribe via patreon.com forward slash history obscura for ad-free episodes for just $2 a month. Thanks for listening. Good night. Good night.